Right, today's job means get this roof fixed down. Hi folks, today we're gonna to be jumping back into an old project. This is the shed I built back in late summer last year and I finally managed to wrap up the roof on it. Let's jump straight into the build and then we'll uh, have a look at this after. Now last week I had Will uh, help me do some of the heavy lifting, get all the sheets up here. Now they're up here, I'm gonna shift them to the side and work one by one, fixing them down in place. First job of the day though, I think I'll get the guttering all put on first and then I can set my sheets so they fall nicely into that. Uh, such are the sort of things that keep me up at night, but I was thinking about how to do this. I don't really want to have to waste a, a board along here, like a, a six by one board or even anything chunkier just to hang our guttering on. We could hang it in here, but because there's a slight angle on our top bit of cladding, I was thinking I may as well, because it's under the eaves anyway, uh, under the overhang anyway, just reverse a board and put that on, which will add up to a square board. So we'll do that first, get one of those pops on, and then we can get our guttering clips. <laughs> Moving on to guttering. Square flow, simple black stuff. It's gonna be hidden around here, no one's gonna see it. And it's nice and cheap. It's 24 pounds something it costs for the brackets, the guttering, the downpipe, and uh, all the connectors we need. Um, I'm just gonna install first one at this end first, then I will run a line along and snap a chalk line. Well, let me share my first fail of the day. There's me banging on about, flip the top board and we'll get a nice plumb surface. Actually, we could punch through the nails. Right, should we try again? That's better now. That's better, at least they all look proper now and they're level. So our gutter will be level and that board looks more like it should do. Up this end, our fascia uh, barge board type trim is going to come along so what I'm thinking is hide the end of this guttering within that it should, we should be able to carry it on to cover up any of the brackets but we'll do the downpipe once we know what we're doing with water butts and things like that but for now let's see how the roof is falling into that gutter although they're kind of loosely fitted on there it looks like we're about halfway into the gutter which is about where we want to be we can probably push them to the front a little bit just in case it overflows over the top, but it's a small roof for the size of gutter, so I think we're okay. Right, let's get on and do this roof. So now what I've done is I've shifted the roof sheets that away, and we're gonna start working on our first sheet there are two types of screws. There are the normal ones which just go down through the trough but instead of a corrugated roof where you go through the, the corrugated section, you go through the flat section on this. And there's a weatherproof washer with those. And then you also get these small stitching screws which basically where we've got a sheet to sheet connection, you do those down there. You'll see that most manufacturers recommend a tape where you lap over the sheets. Now I already had a, a load of this stuff from when we did the porch. Uh, it's probably slightly different, but it's the same idea. It's a, uh, a waterproof, double-sided foam tape um, or a butyl tape. 
So I'm gonna use that in some situations, but to be quite honest, I've just got a general purpose clear silicon, which will be fine as well. I've leveled up this first sheet, made sure it's in the gut of the correct amount. Got a good overhang, and I've also measured this way. Uh, we'll use that as our datum, but it's a small amount of correcting we can do as we go along. Okay, that is it done. I'm afraid you're gonna to have to put up with just the GoPro footage because I just couldn't be dealing with the camera up there as well. Right, but let me take you up now and just show you a little bit of an overview of what I've done. So that's what we're looking like now. The roof is on with all the fixings in the places they need to be. I might come back and put a couple of extras. That's just really where one laps over another. Uh, it makes sense to just put a couple of extras there. So the spacings I've used for this are uh, obviously one, of the fixings down through into every purlin and the purlins are in our case about 900 apart every other trough of the sheet gets one of those and that holds it down and then the stitching screws which are the shorter ones which go on the corrugation are these ones here and those ones are i've put at every 600 millimeters um going up the sheet seems to be all nice and flat dodge the pigeon the only other issue, which is perhaps my ordering that's the issue, but on the end, on the edge of each of the sheets, you don't get the anti-con uh, on that lap, which is fine. So you can get a good seal there. On the end lap, there's anti-con. So that means there's a potential, even though we've got an absolutely massive overlap on these, way more than needed, there's a potential for capillary action to soak up through the anti-con. I mean, that will dry out. Um, it's not going to be there forever but that's just one thing to bear in mind anyway our job now is to get this trim barge board bit on the end which will cover the gutter at that end and go all the way up to the front but to do that i want to make sure i've finished the cladding and probably get a board fixed to this first a timber board to square it all up nicely and then we can drop that down Now I think what I want to do is put a, a board behind there and that's just going to keep this nice and plumb and give us, make sure there's no movement because unfortunately where our last rib, the ray section of the roof is, it's not going to hit there and you can get little filler pieces to go in here but we haven't got that. So I think what I'll do is put a 4 inch board or a 100 mil board against here and then that'll give us something to fix into.
So the build worked out really well. It started out just as gonna be a bit of a store. So it was just gonna have a gravel floor in there, just really, really basic. In the end, I thought whilst the walls weren't up yet, I would pour that concrete. So in the end, we poured a concrete slab. So it was a bit of a make it up as you go along project. Then as far as the outer cladding worked really nicely. This is just a normal cedar feather edge, really cheap way to go and some trim on the corners. And it's not dissimilar from what we're doing next week up on the big workshop that we're in the middle of building. The outside of all that insulation panels is gonna be clad in a very similar way. So here we go on the inside, already not feeling like it's big enough uh, clutter and storage in here. But the roof structure is really simple uh, as you saw in the build process. But uh, as far as the roofing goes, the roof panels are the thicker grade. So they're 0.7 mil, something like that, I think. Uh, box profile. Now you can see this sort of felt lining on the underside that really has worked well. It basically holds any condensation that would be forming on the underside, it holds it and then it dries out during the day. So overnight when the temperatures drop where you would normally get that sort of um, condensation forming and dripping and making a mess, um, which metal roofing is renowned for being um, a problem with, this just counteracts that and it has worked well. The only couple of issues I've had one is down here where the guttering is. I didn't have, I didn't request a cutback of that felt of the Anticon. So where the drip edge is going into the gutter, it wicks up a little bit and it's wicking up by a couple of, well, a few inches. So actually the top timber sometimes gets damp when it rains. So I need to go underneath and see if I can peel that off. Hopefully it's not gonna to be too much of a nightmare to get that back. Only a, literally needs to be 50 mil or so, and that'll just stop that from happening. These GRP roof lights, which I thought were a great idea, and they have, they do let in loads of light, there's no power down here yet, um, do drip sometimes. So if it's um, on a very cold night, condensation forms on there, so I haven't been storing anything below them. That said, I think the moisture that's forming on there is probably a result of the moisture that's wicking up there, if that makes sense. So, because other than that, it's a very dry space and there's no problems of, um, of any damp or anything getting in. So it's either just humidity in the air or that, which is more likely. There's loads of good airflow uh, from front to back. So in the future, not too much of a problem. If needs be, I've got enough spare of the Anticon uh, and we could swap these out and just do a solid roof all the way along. But for now, it's quite nice to have the natural light. Here's a quick look from above. You can see the trims that we were waiting to install uh, now on and the color-coded caps to cover up those tech screws. So these are 150 by 150 barge trims and they go on the front and the sides. Quite an easy way to tidy it all up and finish it off. So this is finished with Plastisol finish, which is a slightly more expensive coating but it's very scratch resistant. It's almost got a slightly leathery look to it, a, a leather gra a grain to it. Um, the workshop is exactly the same color, um, but it's and the same profile roof, but it's a smoother finish. So we're gonna have to be careful because it's less scratch resistant. So just during the install is the main concern, but hopefully they'll tie in nicely. One last thing to mention, cost wise, I think we were at about four or 500 pounds with this for the whole thing. Of course, there's no need for boarding it out with OSB or plywood if you were doing felt or EPDM or fiberglass. Um, I haven't done a cost comparison. I just really wanted to have a go at using this. I like trying different materials. So that was one of the main reasons for going for, with it. Um, but it's a relatively lightweight way to go as well and very, very simple and straightforward to install. So there we go. That is the shed build complete. And it's really nice to have somewhere where I can hopefully keep more of the larger tools and materials down there, keeping the new workshop free and a little bit nicer to work in. So if you wanna see the full build series, I'll leave a playlist at the end of this one. Other than that, we're gonna get stepped back into the new workshop build. So that'll be the next video. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time. Hi, hi folks, in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look back. Oh, come on, Turkey.